Welcome everyone once again uh, to the Train Aid HQ. This is uh, Nick here. Um, I hope you're well. And in today's video, we are looking at the the Carver uh, assessing qualification, and we are going to be looking at the the observation uh, report. So the purpose of this video is to give you lots of help and support to to break down the the Carver um, observation. Um, this is for the the level three certificate in assessing vocational achievement, otherwise known as the Carver, and to really help you to understand the the observation um, elements of this course. So uh, once again, folks, um, please do like the video and also subscribe to the, the YouTube channel to receive the latest alerts and updates uh, here from the train aid team. So um, let's have a look first of all, um, before we embark on the, the observation report itself, we're just going to talk to you just about some observation guidance on uh, what the, the observation is, is all about. So to complete the Carver um, assessing qualification, you need to complete eight um, assessments, four of those our workplace and four of those are vocational. One of the assessments must be observed by a qualified assessor. If you know of a qualified assessor who's willing to observe you, fantastic. Please can you email the team at TrainAid a copy of uh, their assessing certificate and we will of course release an observation report and professional discussion template um, and that means you can embark on the um, the assessment observation so of course you only need to be observed once um, out of the eight practical assessments so just on our instructions page we have broken the the observation down into six parts okay to make it easy to to understand so the the qualified assessor um, will observe the candidate assessor who is undertaking the assessing qualification so stage one is the the briefing stage this is where the the candidate assessor undertaking the carver qualification must brief the learner about the assessment within a quiet setting and explain what the assessment entails so the 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 briefing stage is between the the candidate assessor and also the learner as well so it's very important that the the candidate assessor explains the purpose of the assessment uh fully okay to the learner and make sure that the the learner is is happy with the assessment okay so for every assessment there there needs to be some type of briefing stage here okay usually taken place within a quiet setting and also the standards and criteria need to be shown to the learner um, and to say this is what your planned assessment is on these are your standards or criteria to be used um, in order to make a judgment call on your assessment um, the candidate assessor can of course explain the the purpose of the assessment all of those important things um, within that that briefing stage there um after the briefing stage we have stage two this is the observation um this is where the candidate assessor must observe the learner performing their assessment fully so it's very important for the candidate assessor to observe the learner and they must be objective they must be objective they must see the the entire um, assessment fully and they must write down what they are observing okay so they may have a clipboard and pen they'll be writing down of course their observation notes and they need to be mapping their observation to their standards or criteria so very important that happens as well my advice is to obviously make notes on your observation but try to observe the, the learner fully try not to write too much because of course you're there to to see the learner perform their their performance their skill um their job role for example so it's very important we see them fully and then of course you can write down uh your notes afterwards you can uh fill in the blanks as it were now stage three is the the q and a section so after the observation the candidate assessor 
must ask a, a series of questions to the learner just to confirm their their knowledge okay so the candidate assessor must ask uh, a minimum of of five questions um to the learner regarding um the assessment okay just to confirm their their knowledge of the the topic okay so yes they've performed uh, a practical task now is the, the time to ask them perhaps five questions um to really uh, affirm their knowledge the candidate assessor must write um each of the the learner's responses down okay to the questions but it's very important that each of the questions must be mapped to the standards or criteria so very important that um that the plan questions are relevant to the learner's actual uh, job role or the the questions are relevant to the standards or criteria here um stage four is is feedback so after the questions the candidate assessor must provide feedback to the learner this is ultimately telling the learner whether they have passed the assessment or if they've uh, failed if they haven't met the mark then a reassessment needs to to take place and that's fine just to explain that a reassessment must take place and these are the reasons or these are the improvements that of course can be be made ready for the next time around um but it's very important that the the candidate assessor lets the learner know that they've passed um and also to to find out about um how the assessment went for the learner so to take on board some feedback there so the candidate assessor can say to the learner how did you find the assessment today and therefore the learner can give important feedback on how they experienced the assessment did they enjoy it uh, were they given enough time to prepare for the assessment, for example? Um, after the feedback stage, that's when the learner can be dismissed from the environment. OK, um, stage five is the qualified assessor feedback. So the qualified assessor has been observing the candidate assessor. The candidate assessor is, of course, undertaking the assessing or the carver qualification. And that's where the qualified assessor must um, must explain uh, perhaps the strengths and also the areas for development um, for the, the candidate assessor to, to take on board. So the qualified assessor is giving direct feedback to the candidate assessor to say what they've done well um, as an assessor and, of course, any areas for development as well. And the qualified assessor can give some, some targets here. Uh, stage six, um, after the, the feedback, um, stage six is the professional discussion. Um, there is, of course, a video um, for this uh, professional discussion stage, but the professional discussion is simply a, a summary document of what the candidate has set, assessor has learnt um, over their assessing journey. So it's really taking stock of their strengths and also areas for development as well. So it's a two page document with lots of thought provoking questions and the um, the qualified assessor can, of course, listen and, of course, have have some feedback there. Um, the candidate assessor can complete the professional discussion questions ready in preparation for this uh, professional discussion. So um, it's more of a conversation rather than the qualified assessor having to write down all of the, um, the, the notes explained by the, the candidate assessor. But once again, do have a look at our video on there. But those are the stages of the the observation so hopefully that's nice and clear if you are going to be a qualified assessor observing the candidate assessor as well but let's get on to the actual um the observation report okay so if you're a qualified assessor if you are going to be observing the candidate assessor this form is going to be really useful um, for you to complete it can be handwritten or it can be typed as well and we're just going to talk through the different uh, stages the different questions to make sure that you're fully happy with uh, this this form okay so um, first of all um, the candidate assessor name 
that is the the learner that the candidate who's undertaking the assessing qualification so you need to write uh, their name there and on the right hand side of the form we have the qualified assessor name that's the the observer that is you who is filling out this this document here we also have the observation date and also the late location as well so where the assessment is taking place okay so very important we fill in those those documents there the assessment methods um, used are um, an observation, okay, followed by uh, questions as well. And we need to describe the purpose um, of the observation just within this box here. So really do explain um, about um, the purpose of the observation. So what will the candidate uh, assessor be observing? So what will the, the candidate assessor be uh, observing the, the learner perform? Uh, perhaps what's the topic um, of the assessment and also the standards and criteria to be used there. So the, the first part of um, this uh, this form is filling in um, the information and try to give us as much information here about the the purpose of the observation as uh, as possible. OK, so we've broken down the observation report into different stages. Um, and first of all, we have the pre observation stage here as well. Just on the left hand side, we have the assessment criteria. So we have some questions um, to, uh, to to fill in. Uh, we have the achieved column. So simply put a yes or a no. And also we have a comment box for, for each question. So please do include a comment within every box. OK, so this is the pre-observation stage. So uh, the first question is, did the candidate assessor brief the learner about the purpose of the assessment? Yes or no. And also uh, you just need to fill in a, a comment there. So very important. Did the candidate assessor uh, fully brief the learner about the purpose of the assessment, what it entails, uh, what standards or criteria um, to be used with the assessment. So very important that you as a qualified assessor see the, the candidate assessor perform that, that briefing stage and really to see uh, whether the, the learner had any questions. Um, did the candidate assessor provide the learner with the opportunity to ask questions regarding the assessment taking place? So yes or no, once again. Um, so very important that the learner has a voice, um, that they have the opportunity to say, um, I'm happy with this assessment, but I would like to ask this question. So the candidate assessor must give that opportunity for the learner to, to ask any questions, to show that, of course, they're approachable, that they're, li they're a good listener. Um, they're looking out for the learner as well, just to iron out any questions there as well. So th these questions are for the pre-observation uh, stage. OK, and this is going to set up the next part of the uh, the observation, the observation stage. Um, the, the next question is, did the candidate assessor remain objective um, at all times, okay, and monitor um, the progress of the learner um, throughout the uh, the assessment. So as we know, um, the candidate assessor here, they must remain objective, okay. They must, of course, be able to observe the, the learner fully, okay. Um, perhaps look at the, the learner from different angles to see different viewpoints, of course, very important um, to make sure that... Um, the, the observation report is being written um, by the, the candidate assessor as well. It's important to see um, that the candidate assessor is engaged. Okay, so once again, uh, please put a yes or a no. And we would like some comments there on, on what you observe. Did the candidate assessor judge the learner accurately against the appropriate assessment criteria? OK, so once again, with the observation report, you have a, a mapping column as well. And this is important um, that the, the candidate assessor does, uh, in fact, uh, write down their observation notes and map what they see to the evidence reference column. So once again, mapping uh, to the criteria and also you as a qualified assessor need to, to be confident 
that um, the, the, the candidate assessor is in fact assessing the candidate correctly. OK, so are you confident that the learner has, of course, achieved uh, their, their, their end goal here? Are they are they actually performing the, the task correctly? OK, um, next question is, did the candidate assessor notify the learner? when um, they had seen enough of the assessment. So some assessments, um, they are quite lengthy and um, the candidate assessor could say, thank you very much. I've seen enough of your assessment. Let's go uh, on to the, the Q&A section as well. So there might be the opportunity for the candidate assessor to, to really notify the learner once they've seen enough of the assessment. Um, so just have a look to see whether the the actual uh, candidate assessor is communicating with the learner um, about the assessment timings and whether or not they've seen enough here. But once again, please put a yes or no and any comments here as well. So that is the observation stage. Going to move on now to the, the post observation uh, feedback stage. So um, once again, uh, we have the the assessment criteria question did the candidate assessor provide constructive feedback to the assessor within a quiet setting so um once again we have to make sure that you know the actual feedback between the uh, candidate assessor and the learner takes place in a quiet environment and um were they constructive so did the candidate assessor confirm achievement did they say to the learner very well done this is a pass or um, is 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 will a reassessment take place? That's fair enough, as long as they justify their feedback as well. Um, and also, just on the next question, did the candidate assessor ask the learner how they found the assessment? So, did the candidate assessor give the learner any opportunity to provide feedback on how they found the assessment? So. Um, did they find the assessment comfortable? Um, did they have enough time to prepare? Was it clear? Was it was it simple in terms of preparation? So hopefully the candidate assessor does ask that question. Did the candidate assessor check the learner's paperwork if required as well? So that's, of course, a very important thing that um, the candidate assessor looks perhaps at the learner's paperwork so it could be if a learner has been completing perhaps a risk assessment form that the candidate assessor actually looks at the form that they were filling out to make sure that paperwork is accurate, that it's being filled out correctly by the learner as well. So very important um, that uh, checks are done to any paperwork if uh, required for this assessment. Now, just following on. Uh, did the candidate assessor provide suitable targets or goals for the learner to follow? So uh, once feedback has been provided, did the candidate assessor say to the learner, these are some aspirational targets or, or goals I would like for you to work towards? So, of course, even if the learner has passed with flying colours, they can still be provided with some targets or goals or, or background readings. That's very important as assessor to do that, even provide some smart targets or goals. Um, did the candidate assessor allow the opportunity for the learner to ask any questions regarding the assessment observation? So once again, uh, communication is a two-way street. So did the candidate assessor really allow for any questions to be asked um, about the assessment? Perhaps if a learner has got something they would like to get off their chest in regards to the assessment, okay. Um, and really, if there's anything that they're confused about the learner, that hopefully the, uh, the candidate assessor has given the learner that opportunity to raise, of course, any questions that they might have. And finally, did the candidate assessor ask the learner to sign and date the observation form and any other relevant material? OK, so as we know that um, the candidate assessor must must ask the learner to sign and date um, their observation 
form very important because this this is essentially confirming achievement this is saying that of course the learner is happy that the assessment take, took place they're happy with of course their results as well so um, as a qualified assessor did you see that the candidate assessor has asked the, the learner to sign and date the the observation form so those are all of our questions on the the checklist hopefully that's nice and simple at this point the the learner can be excused okay that the learner can be can be dismissed so uh, the next stage is between the qualified assessor and the candidate assessor as well this next box is the candidate assessor feedback for this section, the candidate assessor must reflect and write how they found the assessment. So the candidate assessor is going to write down, they're going to express how they found the assessment. So they're going to think about what went well. Um, were they clear when briefing the learner? Did they remain objective uh, when observing the learner? So this is the, the candidate assessor really thinking about what went well um how what how how was i as a as a as an assessor did i provide constructive feedback to the learner so these are the the thought provoking questions that the candidate assessor can can write down and also what could be improved uh for my uh future practice as a as a candidate assessor so this box is to be completed by the the candidate assessor so their initial thoughts on on how it went so hopefully using these these bullet points here are some thought provoking ideas for the candidate assessor to to write down and reflect on their performance the next box is for the qualified assessor uh to give some feedback so the the qualified assessor uh, to provide um, feedback to the candidate assessor here. So for this section, the qualified assessor must provide uh, the candidate assessor with their, their overall feedback. In other words, you know, reflecting on one to two to three strengths of the observation. What were the strengths of the candidate assessor? What did they do well? And also highlighting any areas for development for the candidate assessor to take on board and improve upon. So it could be they need to, to brush up on their uh their feedback skills perhaps they could have provided much more clearer feedback they could have provided uh, a, a detailed feedback which is mapped to their standards or criteria as well okay so hopefully you're giving a pat on the back to the candidate assessor you're saying what's gone well okay and perhaps highlight an area for development there the last section is the candidates um the candidates um the, the 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 next steps as it were okay so this is for the the candidate um assessor to to really look at their targets as well so this is an opportunity for the the candidate assessor to to think about an action plan so between the the qualified i uh the qualified assessor and the the qualified uh, sorry, between the, the qualified assessor and the candidate assessor, this is to give some potential targets. So this is to say to the uh, the candidate assessor, um, for a future target, you could perhaps shadow perhaps a candidate assessor. Um, it could be to perhaps review any uh, internal policies or procedures, essentially giving some, some targets, some tangible targets for the candidate assessor to improve now that they have obviously been observed as well. So these are aspirational targets, anything that they could do to improve themselves as a, a candidate assessor. So uh, we just have the, um, the sign-off form here. So we have the candidate assessor signature. Uh, we need a signature and date, uh, qualified assessor to sign and date this form. And this is for the, the train aid office use only as well. OK, so once you've given some targets, a signature and date is, of course, required. OK, and that is our um, Carver. This is our assessing observation report. Hopefully this is uh, nice and clear and also the stages um, of the observation are, are clear as well. If you do have any questions, uh, please do get in contact and we can give you some further advice and help on the, the observation report. 
Uh, once again, thank you for watching our video and uh, we hope to see you on one of our courses. Once again, please do like the channel and uh, do subscribe as well. Bye for now.